All right, uh, this is Dynamic FX. Welcome back to my channel. Um, please, before I start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so I get notified every time I post a new video. Um, to, so this is my uh, weekly market uh, prep session. Um, so you get to see uh, how I analyze the market, basically, especially or especially the sentiment of the market. Okay, so we start off by looking at the report that was released on the 23rd of March, uh, which was on Tuesday. Uh, so for those of you that have not also seen my video on the introduction to uh, the commitment of traders report, please, uh, you can pause the video and go and watch it so I get an idea of what we're talking about. The commitment of traders report is simply the report that is issued by the CFTC, which is the commitment uh, commodities features uh, features trading commission. Yes, I'm sorry, commodities features trading commission. If I got that right, um, yes. Let me see. I think I have their website open here. Which yes, this is it. See my internet. Yes, commodity features trading commission. Okay, it's in the United States. So this gives a, a an overview of what the major participants in the market are doing in terms of their positions or their investments in the uh, online financial market. Okay, so um, in my last video, uh, okay, I didn't do a video last week. So about the week before that, we did a video looking at um, a particular participant in the market that uh, I always like to look at to call the asset managers. We, we have several of them. We have the asset managers, we have the leverage fund. Uh, we also have retail traders, okay? Um, so let me try and load them up so that we can come up while we, so we have the asset manager, we have the leverage funds, we have the retail traders. So um, what I did is to, do, to be able to present those data that I get from that website in a much more, uh, um, in, a, in a simpler way where you can view and correlate with how their actions actually affect price. Okay. Um, so let's start by looking at the asset managers or I could even look at the order flow for the week as a 23rd. Uh, okay, I have this for indices, I also have this for currencies, as a 23rd of March. So we can see that a lot of our flow from a lot of the major currencies, this is just first, just a snapshot of uh, the transactions of the non-commercials, right? So just a week on week, um, um, change. So we are looking at the change of uh, between uh, 16th of March and 23rd of March. Uh, so the you know the non-commercials are large speculators. So this just to give us a snapshot of what the large spe speculators are thinking. So we are seeing a lot of outflow uh, in terms of um, positioning in 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 from the non-commercial side. Okay, so you see, you've seen a three percent drop in net long position uh, from one hundred and eighty thousand to about one hundred and four thousand in in gold. Uh, but we're seeing some inflows into euro, euro, right? So about four um, percent. The Mexican peso is also recovering. Okay, from a net short position, significantly, almost by twenty nine percent from last week's report. The South African rand dropped by six percent. Um, the US dollar eight percent, the New Zealand dollar by twenty two percent, but Australian dollar too twenty two percent. The British pound also dropped by twenty four percent. But if you notice, by the time you look at the chart, you notice that the, there was some sort of recovery uh, because most of the, the position we are still net long in terms of uh, the position, we, meaning that we still have at least adequate. Um, um, long positions or long pos uh, view on on the British pound, okay, which is the same thing you have on the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and US dollar. All right, uh, pretty much almost everything across board except for Japanese yen, the, which is really going more, more and more bearish. Even though we saw during the week that mo most of the Japanese yen pair um, are strengthening briefly, 
uh, during the week, but um, I'm sure we might expect this position to, to continue. So, okay, uh, so across board, we might, we, uh, like even what I was saying last week is that we're seeing a significant uh, reduction in net long position on the Japanese yen. So moving us to a very, very bearish uh, territory. Um, so it could be for, due to a, a lot of factors around maybe, um, I, I also heard the government has stopped the, the bond buying program. Uh, although they also said they were going to allow maybe a free, uh, free to allow market forces determine maybe the flow of interest rates in the economy. If I, if my memory serves me right, but I can verify that. All right. So the Swiss franc too is also um, not getting the support in terms of uh, uh, inflows of uh, positions on uh, on the Swiss franc. So we're seeing it also a 39 percent decline in. Uh, the speculative position on the Swiss franc, which is also similar to what we're getting on the Canadian dollar. That was so, that was what a really bearish outlook for most of the currencies last week. Okay, and um, so this could be what was responsible. So, to my favorite set of guys, I just want to give you a snapshot of what the net, uh, what the non commercials are doing. All right, so uh, looking at the uh, Bitcoin. Um, the asset managers uh, in, in terms of their positioning. I, I like looking at these guys because it seems to be that their actions really kind of track or or lead what the market, uh, price, okay? So there seems to be a strong correlation with in terms of how price moves and what their positions are. So uh, for Bitcoin, we saw Bitcoin um, uh, like I said, I was re really expecting a bearish tone for Bitcoin last week, which we got uh, just briefly before the market uh, um, came and pushed it back up. So we saw a drop almost testing the 50,000 level. Okay. Um, so but what we would notice now is some sort of recovery in terms of the that bearish sentiment I talked about. Uh, so let me let me bring this up quickly so that you could see that. Okay, good. Yes. So uh, remember, like I said, the way to read this chart is you um, when you see this histogram uh, bars above the zero line. Well, let me take this up. So if you see that above the zero line, which is this zero line here. Okay, anything above this zone means there's more uh, positive view or meaning that uh, there are more long contracts than uh, short contracts, right? So here you have more short contracts than um, than long. So I just said, let me quickly add that. So and the line you're seeing here, uh oh, okay, let me take that back. Let me take that back, come on, come on. All right, let me quickly take that back. So the line you're seeing here, all right, this line here, okay, that is the price of Bitcoin itself, okay? Um, that's the price of Bitcoin. So you can see from the current price, we're still somewhere around the 50,000 level. Okay. Um, there was some sort of, uh, like I said, profit taking and more of short contracts coming in, um, last week, but just, it wasn't, it was, it, it was not sustained. So as you can start, we're seeing that reduction in short contracts coming in. So we could be seeing some fresh, maybe expecting some fresh high to the 60K level this week. Um, as, as we, uh, so let, let's see how that unfolds for, for the week, okay? So um, that's that for Bitcoin. So looking at the charts for Bitcoin here, uh, since we're currently around, sitting around 55K, so um, looking at that recovery, we should, if we wait for the technicals to align, we could see a fresh eye into the 60K level. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it, that's really possible. Okay. So for the Australian dollar, we said we we kind of, uh, we're seeing markets seem to be maxing out at this, uh, at, at this level. Okay. Net positions seem to be, maxed out at this level here. So we could be seeing some extreme levels and be getting ready for a market turn. So even looking at the price, 
uh, we, what we now need to do is start looking for maybe stronger currency pairs that could uh, support this view. Okay, uh, looking at uh, the price has already started turning and you can see um, the net the, the positions have started going into negative territory. So, but we will definitely need to see more short contracts coming in uh, to be able to uh, so when when we start seeing this type of levels in terms of short contracts coming in, then um, we may have already confirmed a, a turning point for the Australian dollar. So uh, my view would be uh, I'm really expecting a bearish tone for the Australian dollar given the market sentiment. So if we see more orders coming in uh, forcefully, the other will see huge um, short contracts coming in and uh, pushing the net position uh, to these levels um, lower than uh, approaching the negative 20k level then yes we may have confirmed that so in, in much more long term uh, I'm, I'm really expecting maybe the Australian dollar to uh, to really drop towards the 0 0.70 level again all right so Let's look at uh, the Canadian dollar. Obviously, the Canadian dollar has been enjoying that rally coming from this correlation with crude oil. Uh, but uh, looking at the sentiment of the market, you can see uh, more fresh uh, orders coming in. I, I spotted, I, I mentioned in my last video, some sort of divergence that we're seeing here. Uh, some sort of divergence here in terms of price and looking at the declining um, uh, net, net positions of these asset managers, right? It seems to be declining. We're not getting new highs in terms of the support for the Canadian dollar, all right? But overall, we could still we expect the, the Canadian dollar to still be, uh, still be bullish given that we still have significant orders above the zero the zero line and don't forget like i mentioned in my last video the price here has been uh it was inversed so you, you're looking at the canadian dollar uh usd okay so let's see if we could um get opportunities in terms if you look at the canadian dollar of course on the monthly uh, view, oh, you've been seeing a bearish uh, tone, of course, that is supporting the strength of the Canadian dollar. And this, this obviously, we, we could still see, um, if we get a break below this monthly low levels here, then it's possible that we see a very aggressive, maybe drop, uh, if the uh, sentiment for the Canadian dollar continues. Okay, but uh, if not, um, uh, given the the rise in yield in in, in 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 the U.S. market, we could see maybe the dollar recover back to those uh, previous highs. All right, so uh, we'll be watching how the market unfolds and allow the market to dictate and tell us uh, which way if we want to go. All right, so overall, you could still be expecting a strong Canadian dollar, but not as much as uh, we've seen. But like I said, we're seeing a very strong divergence in terms of what price is doing and in terms of the sentiment of the market. So um, obviously, we've already seen a, a drop in um, a, a drop in price. So a drop in price, meaning some sort of recovery of the US dollar here. Okay. So we'll keep an eye on the Canadian dollar. Um, let's look at the British pound. Okay, British pound finished also very strong on Friday, but uh, let's still also not forget that, uh, that we're also not seeing those fresh highs in terms of uh, new uh, uh, positions coming on, new contracts coming in in support of the British pound. British pound, like I said, has had its uh, run since um, January in terms of price, okay? And uh, the sentiment has been supporting that very uh, strongly, okay? We've seen that recovery from very net short positions, okay? 
um, that that we've seen that has uh, okay the price has uh, very well um, been tracking okay so but we've not seen fresh highs in terms of the the sentiments of uh, of, of of this asset manager so we're not seeing new long positions coming in as high as what we've seen before we may have well been well maxed out in this level so uh, if we look at uh let's look out for g bp usd okay we've already started seeing price maybe reacting to the sentiment of the market. even though looking at the monthly levels yeah um that run we had in terms of the bullish uh nature or the, the bullish run for the uh, British pound uh, may be cut short even as we, have, uh, we hit this um, 1.4, uh, 1.45 levels, right? So we could be seeing a possible retracement back to uh, these levels here, okay? So it's a possibility. Um, like I said, we still have some very, very uh good contracts above this level so but we've not had we've not had any significant uh levels here so it could be uh, a signal for a significant market turn if we get to see more strength coming into the dollar all right so that's for the british pound so for the japanese yen so outlook for the british pound is actually bearish okay it's very very bearish uh we, i i feel we may, we may have hit a, a market top so we may be expecting a strong reversal on uh on the british pound as as the dollar begins to strengthen all right so the japanese yen too was something i said uh, was quite interesting to watch uh, as we are seeing a lot of ne uh, net long positions decline strongly. It was a strong decline from here to here. Okay, and we've seen price react to that. So we've seen, so like I said, this also is inverse. So what you're looking at is the JPY, okay, against the US dollar. So that has been reversed. So um meaning that the japanese yen is becoming weaker while the dollar is getting um strengthened so this is the dollar strength that you're looking at and if you look at the charts you go to usd jpy where do we have that w uh, usd jpy good all right um you can already see price rallying here okay look at that rally and um, I feel that we may, from my opinion, uh, we may still we still have some very strong potential of getting back to these uh, levels here. So these are more long-term plays. Um, I'm I'm more of the options trader now. I trade currencies using um, um, standard options in the market, so I don't use the CFDs anymore. So I'm able to manage my risk more uh, professionally. You know, so uh, I'm I'm looking at holding this position to till um, maybe get maybe like a one month contract uh, options or using call options in this in this particular case uh, and watching price maybe rally up to that level. So it's really possible that we get to see uh, uh, the U.S. Japanese yen U.S.D. against Japanese yen rally up to about 123 levels um, if the fundamentals play out right okay so um, for some of us that like um, patterns here so we could see this pattern forming here and here so well uh, I wouldn't even know what that pattern is <laughs> I don't really trade them but it's really interesting watching what might unfold here so uh, my expectation is definitely to we may see um of course the us dollar is bullish in this particular case because of the bearish sentiment in the markets for the japanese and so actually when we begin to see um 
you know, net shots coming in here, something like what we had here way back in 2019. Okay, that really sort of made the dollar rally, uh, rally uh, against the Japanese yen. And it's also something we've seen in the past play out severally. So we may want to see the net shots uh, or net long position fall into the negative territory here then that will really confirm a further um, strengthening of the USD against the, the Japanese yen. So um, you always want to make sure that you align your, your technical view with your market sentiment, with also what is going on from the moment in the, in, in the macro economy or global economy so that you have a better uh, risk to reward opportunity that you can maximize over a long period of time. Okay, so Euro, well, there's really nothing much to see here. Whatever I guess we're experiencing, um, whatever it, it, it's just a mail with Christmas, so we could still be expecting um, Euro to rally. Um, so I can still, let me still bring that up. Let me bring that up here. Okay, so we're seeing price decline despite very strong um market sentiment for the euro so that could just be profit taking on the meantime so we could see a repeat or maybe something that happened uh before the end of last year middle of last year okay we see that we had a lot of net long positions here so we could see a retest here and maybe back to those levels here i still feel that there's still a lot of uh, uh um net long position or bullish sentiment for the euro okay so i feel the euro will, will still will still may still show a lot of strength during the week so i'm watching that closely so look at even the charts um, let's go to euro usd okay yes so there's still a lot of room here okay so a lot of room even if we still get back to this level here um I, we might still get to, to see push back up so overall am i still, i'm still expecting a bullish um, uh, euro um, i could just confirm that with something that i i, 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 I look at too before Let's see. So there's already a shift in market sentiment for the Japanese yen. So we need to be very mindful of that and to have a long term view. So um, Euro is still pretty much very bullish. Okay. So just let's keep that in mind. All right. So back to where I was before asset managers. Okay. So that has been sorted out. Mexican peso um, still be a bullish tone, okay, um, for the Mexican peso. We're seeing a lot of uh, net long. So this what you're looking at is also, this is not USD uh, MXN as you would know it on your platform, but this is MXN, which is Mexican peso against the US dollar. So it's an inverse relationship. Um, so, um, in this, you're still seeing a lot of strength from the Mexican peso against the US dollar. Uh, we've also started seeing a shift in sentiments for the uh, New Zealand dollar since we've hit uh, peak um, uh, position uh, within the last uh, two, two, three years, right? Yeah, and since 2018, okay, we kind of reached the peak and since then, um, we started seeing price decline. Uh, so we, it's, if, like I said, we still want to wait to see um, a lot of short contracts coming to drive the sentiments before we can confirm a shift in sentiments to start looking, to start taking long-term short positions on the New Zealand dollar. Okay, so quickly, let me see if I can still touch which other one. Of course, uh, we're seeing a similar position on the Swiss franc. Okay, a lot of already a, a, a net shot outlook for the Swiss franc. 
Okay, this has already been confirmed. So we'll definitely, maybe most likely we've seen those rally uh, in the in this market for the US dollar. Okay, let's see what we have on US dollar. US dollar positive sentiment. Okay, we've already seen that rally. All right, this is the dollar index. So we're seeing positive uh, inflows coming into the markets from the previous week. So we've made the new highs. So we're still, we are still confident that the dollar will should strengthen or begin to, uh, will continue to rally uh, throughout the course, uh, course of the week or throughout the course of the month. Um, so let's see if we have any um, position we could take. So let's see. Do I have the US dollar index here? Uh, show all uh, spy, spy. Let's see if we could get the dollar index in here. Okay, if I can find it. Yes, there's some other tool I could use. So let's see if we get. Uh, just give me a second. Let me see so I can pull that up. Oh, there you are. All right, so while that is coming up, so um, overall, we were expecting a very strong um, dollar. So a lot of sentiments coming back in favor of the dollar. Uh, so this is this is very, 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 very interesting. So I would really want to maybe look at taking opportunities in USD, CHF, USD, JPY, USD, uh, maybe the dollar index. Um, but uh, there's still a lot of strength for the euro, so I'm not sure I want to go against euro. Okay, um, I'm also looking at, I'll be looking at taking long positions in, um, okay, so let's see. So maybe strong sell of if I see some very strong sell-off uh, on the Australian dollar, I, I would want to follow that also. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to an opportunity where I could start teaching people how to trade the um, options on currencies, all right, the standard options on currencies, not the binary options, but the standard options. Okay, so um, I'll look at taking much more long-term positions um, with well-managed risk um, outlay. Okay, um, so let's see. So this for the dollar. Let's see what we have for, okay, we've pretty much covered everything, I guess. Pretty much covered everything. Uh, the South African rand, uh, not something I'm really interested in. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can find this data on my website on tradevasty.com. Uh, All right, uh, tradevasty.com. I have that right here. Let's see if I can bring that up. Tradevasty.com. Okay, then four slash cot analysis so let's check that out anytime just feel free just play around i, I hope this video has not taken so long um so but if you have any question um please feel free to leave a message or comment or you can chat me up on telegram on facebook or you can send me an email i would get back to you so thank you once again for uh, for being part of my channel. I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you for the support. Really, pretty much, I just enjoy just doing this stuff for them. Um, so, and um, I, I, like I said, I, I plan to do more of these videos as time will permit. Okay, so thank you once again. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, till next week, trade profitably.